In this lecture, I will show you how to measure the voltage drop and current distribution on a power supply trace that is routed on multiple layers. We will perform the simulation on the VBUS power supply line of this 8 layer PCB from the manufacturer Olimex. Even though FEM 4.2 itself is just a two dimensional simulation tool, you can still simulate the voltage drop by combining signals into one layer. The simulation will show us that when drawing 500 milliampers by the IC in the top right corner of the PCB, the voltage drop will be 20 millivolts across the whole power supply line. The current distribution analysis will show us that we don't have any major current peaks, which is what we expect as there are no narrow parts in the trace. Adding vectors will make it more apparent that there is almost no current flowing in the two marked branches in the bottom left side and that the current density slightly increases at the end of the top right part of the trace as the trace starts to get slightly narrower there. This KiCad project can be downloaded from the Olimex GitHub page here. As first step, let's mark the whole VBUS net in KiCad. For this, go to the Nets tab, click on this button. In the next window, you can filter for VBUS. Click on the VBUS signal. Now the VBUS signal on all layers is marked. You can close this window now. As you can see here, the VBUS line starts on the top layer and then goes into layer 4 and goes out again at the bottom layer. Now we have to mark the VBUS line on all the copper layers. In order to select the whole net, you can click on any point of the trace and then hit U on the keyboard multiple times until the whole net is marked. Add the pads to the selection by holding down the shift button. I will add pin 1 of the USB socket and pin 31 of this IC. Now copy the selection by pressing Ctrl C on the keyboard. Place the copied net somewhere in a free area. Now let's enable all the layers. Mark the whole PCB and delete it. Now zoom into the copied net area by clicking here. I will now mark all the copper pieces and change the layer of each of them to the top layer. This is done by clicking on the trace segments and then pressing the keyboard button E to open the property menu. Next, remove all the vias. As you see, I'm combining all the layers into layer 1. The only disadvantage of this simulation method is that the voltage drop inside the vias is not simulated. If you want to perform a full three-dimensional simulation of your currents, you can check out my 3D FEM course for KiCad. A three-dimensional simulation is very slow, so this 2D approach is still a good alternative for many use cases, especially if you want to have a fast estimate of the voltages and currents. So both 2D and 3D simulations have their place. In any case, I suggest you to be able to calculate the voltage drop on paper, also without the simulation tool. Once all vias are removed and the layers are all changed to the top layer, go to File and click on Plot. In the next window, only select the top copper layer, change the plot format to DXF. We only want to plot the copper, so remove the check mark for the plotting of the designators. Change the unit to millimeters, click the plot button and close the window. The DXF file is now stored in a specified output folder. Now open FEM 4.2. Create a new project. We want to solve a current flow problem. Click on File, Import DXF and select the DXF file that we created with KiCad. In the next window, you want to change the tolerance to the smallest possible value. If you increase the tolerance, FEM 4.2 tends to leave net segments open, which will add manual work for you as you have to reconnect the segments. I will set it to this value. The import progress will be shown in the bottom of the window. 
Once the input finished, zoom into your trace by clicking here. For the simulation, we need one copper area without spaces in between. Empty spaces in the copper area will result in an error. Hence, I will delete all the remaining via cutouts, as for example this one. Mark the point segments with a right mouse click. You can select multiple points by holding down the control key on the keyboard. Delete the points with the delete button on the keyboard. Now click on the block label button and place a block label inside the copper area. We want to define this block label as copper. For that go to properties and then click on materials library. Move copper to the right field and click OK. Now right click on our block label and hit space on the keyboard to enter the property window. Change the block type to copper. Click on this button to generate the mesh. If you get this error message, you just have to save the project. Once the meshing succeeded, you can zoom out to see the whole trace with this button. As you see, the meshing is still a bit coarse. You can refine the resolution by right clicking on the block label and hitting the space bar on the keyboard. Remove this check mark. Now click OK and start the meshing again. The mesh is now much finer. As next step, we want to apply the input voltage to the line segment in the bottom left corner. For this I'm zooming out with this button and zooming into the bottom left corner by using this button. Change to the line segment selection and go to properties. Then click on boundary and add a property. Change the name to 5 volt and set the voltage to 5. Right click on the line segment and hit the space bar on your keyboard. Choose 5 volts and click OK. Now let's zoom into the upper right corner of the trace. We want to draw 500 milliampere into this line segment. For this we create a new boundary. We have to insert the surface current density and not just a specific current. To calculate the surface current density, I created this Excel sheet. We have to insert three values here. The first one is the trace thickness, which is 35 micrometers. Let's open the problem definition and set the depth of the trace to 35 micrometers as well. And we also know the current, which is 0.5 amperes. I will find out how wide the pad is inside KiCad. In KiCad, zoom into the pad. Mark it and press E on the keyboard to enter the property window of the pad. As you see here, the pad is 0.2 millimeters wide. I insert this value into the table. We now end up with the surface current density. Copy it and let's modify our boundary. I rename the boundary to USB current. Paste the value here and also add a minus in front of the value as the current is flowing out of the segment. Click OK. Select the segment with the right mouse button, hit space on the keyboard, change the boundary to our newly created boundary. You can now zoom out again and run the solver. Switch to the results window by clicking here.
you can now click on any point in the trace and measure the voltage in this window. As you see, the voltage drop is too small. At this point, I want to remind you again not to try simulation results if you cannot verify the results by yourself on a piece of paper. Let's go back to the problems tab. If we check the start and end points of the segment, we see that the distance is 0.2. As we know that our pad is 0.2 millimeters, this means we have to change the unit of our problem statement to millimeters. The depth field also has to be adjusted. 35 micrometers are 0.035 millimeters. Click OK and rerun the solver. Once you switch back to the results window, we now see a more realistic voltage drop. Let's copy the value and paste it into our table. The simulated voltage drop is around 21 millivolts. Let's verify that with a manual estimate. I will approximate the length of the trace with the measurement tool of KiCad. You can activate the measurement tool by pressing shift Control m on the keyboard. The mouse pointer will change once the measurement mode is entered. Now simply measure the distance from here to here. And also from here to here. If we sum up these two distances, we get approximately 90 millimeters. Now let's check the width of the trace. This is done by clicking on a segment and pressing the keyboard button E. This opens the property window of the trace. The trace here is 1.5 to 4 millimeters wide. I will enter the values in this online calculator as I know that the results of this calculator are correct. If you are not confident about the result, you can calculate the voltage drop by yourself on paper. The calculator tells us that the trace should have a resistance of of 0 0.0287 ohms. If you multiply this with our 0 0.5 amperes of current, we end up with a voltage drop of around 14 millivolts. This is similar to the simulated value, so we are good.